the apostles were sowing into Jesus during that time. He was mentoring them. Luke 638 was actually about uh, King Jesus actually training those disciples how to sow and how to unlock investors and lock, unlock people that will be a blessing to them because they were a blessing to their man of God, their leader, their teacher of the word. They were blessing their prophet. So King Jesus was actually training them of how to move in the spirit realm concerning good success, how to move in the spirit realm concerning good success. But those, those apostles, they received their harvest in the book of Acts, which is the next book in the Bible. So we have the Gospels in one aspect dealing with uh, the seed for them. And then we see the next book in the Bible is dealing with the harvest for them. Those disciples came into the financial plan of the Spirit of God in the next book in the Bible. I, and, and since we never, and it's kind of wild, like, I, I know you never heard it like this here. But those apostles, the apostles stepped into their harvests in Acts. But I want you to catch this. While the Holy Ghost is moving, the apostles came into wealth. But they didn't come into wealth just because they were with Jesus. They came into wealth because they was sowing bountifully into Jesus. They saw the fruit of their doings in the book of Acts. Now, saints, I want you to catch this. What was Jesus doing? He was a seed trainer, but I never heard this teach ever. I promise you, I ain't never heard no apostle, prophet, teacher ever teach this. But I'm giving you a new doctrine today underneath this glory. Uh, we in another glory, so I'm teaching you out of another glory. Jesus was a harvest trainer. Um, and he was teaching them strong reaping hands. Oh. Never. He, he was teaching them strong reaping hands. Never. He was teaching them strong reaping hands. He was showing them how to intensely reap harvests. How to be intentional about grabbing and gathering in the schedule of God that is to bless them. He, he was showing them how to be a, a, a fortified reaper. How to gather in the harvest. See, you've heard about strong sowing hands. But the spirit of the living God said strong reaping hands. See, the same way that you steadfast about sowing the seed, you, you got to train yourself to be steadfast about reaping the hop. And, and since that, that harvest awareness it, it, it brings you to a place where you're constantly letting your soul be prosperous. See, your soul can't be prosperous without prosperity pictures. You have to picture yourself prospering. The prosperity pictures, it takes the soul and the soulless body into gathering in the harvest. Saints, I, I, I want you to hear me very strong on here. The harvest comes to your soulless body before it comes to your physical body. 
that ain't never been taught before. Ever. Ever. The harvest, it arrives on the doorstep of your soulish house. Before the doorstep of your physical bodily house. So before your body could grab money coming, your soul is the grabber of money coming. Firstly, before your soul could grab, before your body could grab health, your soul is the grabber of divine health. Before your body could grab investors in your life, men giving into your bosom, your soulish body got to grab it first. What? You ever heard that before? Huh? Your soulish body got to meet your investors before your physical body does? Many people are trying to get their, their physical body to see men giving into their bosom, but your soulish body has still got a veil over it. Your soulish body is still blind, uh, uh, obliterated from it. You, your soulish body haven't met the harvest yet. But you dedicated to your physical body, experiencing the harvest. And God's saying, there's a part of you that is messing up this storyline. Because if I ain't got the soul, how am I get to the body? The soul is more important than the body. Your body ain't even going to last 200 years, but your soul is. Your body ain't even going to last 500 years, but your soul is. You want your body to experience a house, experience a car, experience raises, experience money coming, experience debt cancellation. But I'm trying to cancel your debt in your soul first. I want your soulless body to have an encounter with debt canceling angels. I want your soulless body to have an encounter with divine healing in your body. I, if your soul depressed, how am I release health in the body? Because your soul is alienated from the divine healing encounter. See, Jesus took that man infirmity away in his soulish body. Oh my gosh. You know it's a new glory, right? It's a new glory. I told you that you, you're receiving a glory impartation as you listen to me. I'm, I'm, I, I've been sent up Jehovah God to send angels to you today. Yeah, this, this physical body is young. You see? But this soul is not. I've been, I've, I've been, I've been, uh, auctioned to, to send angels in your direction as you're listening to me. Everybody that's receiving this word, that's what we're doing. We're releasing angel armies on this line right now. Angel armies are with me. This is about to be a good week for me. This is about to be a blessed week for me. Because the angel armies are all around me. And in these, in these angel armies, there's different brackets of angels that I'm receiving. I'm receiving blessing angels on this line today. I'm receiving wealth angels on this line today. The wealth transfer has got to happen because I got people that are assigned to work ammunition to make sure that the battle is won in my finances. My God. We got invisible people that are assigned to make sure that the war is won in my health. My God. Well, we got invisible people that are assigned. They are the heavenly host of God. See, Jesus wanted Philip's soul and his soulish body to multiply the five loaves and two fish. What? Jesus wanted Philip's body, his soulish body, to multiply the five loaves and two fish. You say, prophet, what are you talking about here? 
Philip. Now, I'm going to show you something. You notice that in the book of Acts, Philip has a ministry of signs and wonders, miracle signs and wonders. So what is the catch here? Wasn't it not Philip being translated? So what is the catch here? Philip didn't recognize that God wanted him to enter into that supernatural right now. Huh? He, he didn't want him to wait to the book of Acts. He, he didn't catch the set time for favor. It was his time. It was his moment. Jesus was ready for his soulish body to step into that ministry of miracles, signs, and wonders. But Philip was slow. Huh? We got to go to the stud, Jesus. You know, Kroger not open, Lord. You know, all oh my, they ain't got no workers no more, Jesus. Them niggas out there twinkling their fingers, they don't want to ring me up. They done made their own line in Walmart just so I could be the cash register. I ain't getting paid, but I'm up there chucking up milk, chucking 2% whole milk. Got the cow on the carton up there. Moo! I'm, I'm, I'm up there sweating in the line. Up there, this, she over there on her phone texting people, writing on Instagram, doing selfies and TikToks while I'm up there chugging this milk. Pass it. Just chugging them. You know, Lord, we can't go to the Jerusalem gas station. They ain't got no more. They ain't got no more. No fish batter. You know, oh, we can't go to Target. And Philip missed that there was abundant provision angels that was present, that was ready to take Philip into his ministry before time. When I say before time, I really mean before Acts. Because, see, see, he started moving in that supernatural in the book of Acts. But he was supposed to catch that supernatural anointing and those supernatural angels in the Gospels. Saints, um, God's provisional display has a motive to it. What is the motive of God overtaking your life with money? With favor, with provision, what, what what is he after? He's after your heart. He's after your heart. Remember the Lord thy God, for it is He that giveth thee the power to get wealth. Remember the Lord thy God. He's after your heart. He was telling them in the book of Deuteronomy, after I bless you, don't turn to idols. After I bless you, don't turn to evil. Don't follow the ways of the other nations. Don't arouse my jealousy. One massive mystery about the harvest is this. That God has the harvest as a personal performance for you. The Lord wants to personally perform for you. And audition to always be on the throne of your heart. Saints, in the harvest, God wants you to judge, judge the harvest and say, I've been missing out on this all these years. Wrong relationships, wrong desires, trying to connect with wrong people, feeling bad for wrong people, going to wrong cities, doing wrong deeds, watching wrong things, saying wrong words, 
having wrong appetites. When the harvest come, I've been missing out on this. This is what God was training me for, sanctifying me for, purging me for, for me to have pleasures forevermore like this. The harvest is the spirit of God hovering over your water. See, see, when you are sower, you got water on the inside of you. That's why you're able to sow. Be because the seed of the word of God is growing in your soul. So you, so you know that you're supposed to honor God. You know you're supposed to sow bountifully. You know you're supposed to dream about the seed. So, so the fact that you're able to sow is because you got some level of water operating in you. So watch this here. Like Genesis, when the harvest is flowing, that's the spirit of God hovering over your waters. And see, the let there be is whatever you name the seed. <laughs> let there be is whatever you believe in God for. Let there be is whatever you, you dreaming about. That's all up to you. You your everybody let there be is different. Your let there be as the same way that the light showed up, so it is the light of your harvest will show up and you'll visibly see it. Says, let me talk to you about living a harvest after harvest lifestyle. For you to live a harvest after harvest lifestyle, you have to be constantly in sowing mode with your body your soul, and your seed. You notice I didn't say spirit, right? Because your spirit is 100% Jehovah God. Yeah. The spirit is 100% wise. I say you got to be constantly in sowing mode of your body, your soul, that's your inner man, your body is your outer man, and your seed. This is where your provision is, what you possess. You got to be in constant sowing mode. To live a life of harvest after harvest, you have to be in constant sowing mode. And you know what that really means? That you're dedicated to impressing God with all of your choices. Every choice you make, you want God to be proud of that cho choice and make his bo boast in that choice. To live a life of harvest after harvest, you have to be a praise warrior. You ever heard that before? Ain't that deep? Praise warrior. You have to learn to war in the spirit with your praise. You have to be a praise warrior. That means that you got to be praising God all the time. You have to be celebrating him. Remember, thankfulness and rebellion are not neighbors. It's the unthankful that rebel, the ungrateful. But when you're thankful, I remember one time Dr. Mike Murdoch came to me and said, I hope you never change on me. That's what he told me. I hope you never change on me. And I told, I told him like this, thankfulness never changes. I am thankfulness. Because in the anointing of thankfulness, you too busy thinking about what was done for you. For you to do something against what was done for you. I remember Leroy Thompson was talking to Kenneth uh, Hagen, which was his uh, his, uh, his, uh, his leader. And uh, Kenneth Hagen told Apostle Leroy Thompson, uh, you coming again to the session? I already taught that. I'm teaching the same thing. And Leroy Thompson said, he told 
uh, Kenneth Hagen. I'll be right there, Dad. Leroy Thompson was thankful. Now, Leroy Thompson also, uh, um, he was inspired by Fred Price. There was a year where he was going to conferences with Fred Price. Fred Price, which is, uh, he's with, uh, the Lord today. He's in, he's in glory. He went on to his reward. He went on to his reward, I think, last year. Fred Price was at the conferences and he was so in big. He was so 50,000, so large amounts of money. Now, Leroy Thompson was watching everybody and the preachers were not sowing. And Leroy Thompson didn't have a lot. Leroy Thompson said, he knows something that we don't know. But he said the other preachers went and sow. But Fred Price kept on going and sowing and sowing and sowing. Large amounts of money. Now, Fred Price owned much, accumulated much, lived big. I mean, financially, it was a financial explosion. Leroy Thompson said the next year he didn't have much, but he said when every time Fred go up, I'm going to go up. Now, saints, some of you all don't know this, but you don't know Apostle Leroy Thompson is a friend of Dr. Mike Murdoch. And every time Fred went go so, Leroy went go so. And Leroy didn't have as much as Fred. But Leroy was sowing his best. And saints, Leroy said he wanted to go to Fred's house. So he went over to Fred's house. And, and Fred uh, uh, Fred told him, come back a couple hours. And let him sit in Rolls Royce, do all this different, different type of stuff. And Leroy said, Lord, do you want me to have all this stuff? Leroy done got it a million times over. So many different times over. They used the seed. Not only sowing money, but sowing their life to obedience to the voice of God. I, I want you to catch this. Don't just sow your money. Give your life over to this same Holy Ghost that you saw it into. Don't just give money. Give your body, your energy, your being over to the Holy Ghost. Let him use you. You see us preachers, we are the most disrespected work on earth. And when I say disrespected, I mean that disrespected, I mean that uh, in this field of work, it come underneath hostility, uh, disrespect, dishonor, disrespect. So um, preachers, uh, a preacher sent to you, when you treat them with honor and you honor them and obey them and you, you bring pleasure to them, all the heavens begin to open up to you and minister to you. And God lets you live out of the windows of heaven. He lets you live out of the doors of heaven. And he lets you live out of the gates of heaven. And all these three streams is provision that can't be numbered. The gates, the windows, the doors are three streams of provisions that you can't put an amount on it. This is just enormous amounts of God backing you for respecting the Holy Ghost moving in a body. See, see that all the Holy Ghost does, he comes down on earth, he lives out his life through a man, a physical man's body. And whoever could see that man gets the rewards, the angels, the harvests that come with that sight and that servanthood. 
But since Leroy Thompson ended up blowing past uh, Fred Price, in a sense, you know, because he saw Fred Price operating in the seed. The person that's training you to sow is giving you a roadmap how to escape the craftiness of the satanic lifestyle. Did you hear that? Escape the craftiness of the satanic lifestyle because the satanic lifestyle is crafty. You think if people knew that they was going to be boiling in hell today, you think they would have acted the way that they acted? No! It, there's been people in hell for 100, 200 years now, boiling in water. You think that they would have said what they would have said? Do you think that they would have spent their time differently? Yes! They burning, skin burning, The wages for sin is death. The person training you to sow is showing you how to arouse your God. They're training you what makes your God happy. They're training you how to, to learn respect to the spirit of God, how to respect the spirit of God. The same way you don't show up to a baby shower with nothing and then eat up all the food. You up there got chitlins, greens. Oh, I don't even know why I put chitlins in there. Let me, let me take them chitlins out. I ain't eat no chitlins. Up there, you got a plate of greens, ham hocks, smoked turkey neck, turkey wings. You got all that stuff on your plate. You ain't bring nothing to the baby shower. I just told her. But you bring something to the baby shower because you respect. That respectfulness causes you to sow. You respect the occasion, the presence. Of the person with the baby. Now saints there was a. There was a sowing anointing. That I'm going to talk to you about. Um, that the kings walked in. Um, I'm going to say something to you strong. That these kings were. Were. Uh, uh, they were similar to Solomon sowers. You say, prophet, what you mean by that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. These, these were kings that came to Jesus when he was born. I'm going to talk to you about it. Don't worry. Glory to God. Glory to God. See, these things are coming to me. All type of information coming to me. I'm just finding out when to release it. When I, 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 Salia, Koniza, Ora, Karianga, Golija, Nanzelelion, let Vila Agrazi Kila Nanzo. All type of stuff start coming to my, my soul, like alphabets on here, teachings, doctrines. As I'm talking to you on here, cause the glory real strong, my eyes open. And these kings were, were, were similar Solomon sowers. And, and when Jesus came on the scene, they started sowing into Jesus. Sowing is something that Satan don't want you to operate in because it brings your spiritual blessings into the natural realm. See, you got spiritual blessings, but you can't get those spiritual blessings if you a fleshly person. How are you going to operate in the flesh and then receive what's of the spirit? Spiritual blessings only come to spiritual participants. That's why God constantly keep on training you to walk in the spirit, think in the spirit, pray in the spirit, praise in the spirit, live in the spirit. 
Because the blessing that makes you rich and addeth no sorrow to you is where? In the spirit. Money coming to me now in the spirit. The money cometh is in the spirit. When you're in the spirit, so does the money come in. Money coming to me now is in the spirit. See? And even what you what you also catch in here, even God in the flesh is a sower. Your man of God is God in the flesh. Even God in the flesh is a sower. Let me set you up. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went around doing good. Do you know what I mean? He went around sowing. He was sowing good seeds. He was sowing bountiful seeds. The miracle of the loaves was a harvest for them. But it was a seed for Jesus. So, 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 so think about this. I'm going to give you a new revelation, a new doctrine there. Jesus' miracle of the loaves was a harvest for the people that ate that food. But it was a seed, a bountiful seed that Jesus sowed into over 5,000 souls. Jesus was a massive sower. My God. Jesus was so and so strong that over 5,000 people was able to participate in his seed sowing. For them, it was a harvest. But for him, it was a seed. Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. When you anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power, you start sowing big. Remember Deuteronomy 28 you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Jesus, when he did the miracle of the loaves, he was lending to many nations. There was families in there. There was Mexican nation. There was families in there. They go to black nation. There was families in there. They go to white nation. There, are, there was all type of nation, Hispanic nation. There was all type of Guatemala nation. There was nations in there. I'm just giving you examples. He was lending to many nations and not borrowing. See, Jesus was expressing how the lender's anointing works. My God. <laughs> he, he was showing, he was showing you how, what it looked like when you are a lender. How you, how it looked like when the lender's grace Sit on you. What happens when you got lending angels? You got angels of the lending power of God. Lending angels. Lending angels. Le what? 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 Lending angels. What it look like when you a lender? You ever heard that before? Sure you have it. We gonna pull the fourth time. Money! To me now, lending angels on guard and on post right now. Lending angels are ministering in my life right now. I am a lender and not a borrower. Why? Because I'm a sower. This, this is the path of the sower. The path, the graduation of a sower is being a lender. Wow. 